Hello again and welcome to the second part of the Open Web UI video. So I've written some instructions to help you installing and setting up Open Web UI and Olama. It's here on the right, I'll leave the link in the video description. So let's start immediately and uh, as you see here, there is a brief summary of the operation you're going to do to install uh, Open Web UI and Olama. The first thing to do is to configure an SSH port forwarding that will be between the main server and the other server. And we're going to use auto SSH because uh, in case the SSH connection gets broken for some reason, this uh, program called auto SSH will reestablish it automatically. You don't need to uh, script anything, it's already done. And uh, this uh, SSH port forward will connect uh, Olama. Uh, so from the main server, you'll be able to connect directly to Olama as it would be in the main server, even though it's in another server. And then we're going to see how to set up Olama. This one is uh, quite straightforward. It's just a, a Docker container with a volume. And finally, there is uh, the Open Web UI. So how to set up Open Web UI? This is, is a little bit more involved, but it's similar to the to how you set up Olama. So there is a, a Docker image, a Docker a Docker volume. But you have to build the Docker image because it's um, some parts of the front end are not in a, in an image, so you need to to build it. So in this documentation, you'll find all the references I, I put here. So see there are the C also sections. Okay, so first thing first, on the main server, you need to install auto SSH. So this uh, instructions are for Debian, but I think this one is packaged for most uh, distributions. And then here I use the root uh, user, but I think you could use any other user as long as the port is uh, accessible. Anyway, I created um, an SSH key for this purpose. And so you just use SSH key gen. You can find these instructions if you click here on the, this references, which points you to the, to the footnotes. And then you open the ArchWiki page. And here you find paragraph number two how to generate an SSH key pair. So this is the instructions. I used uh, an RSA key and uh, with the biggest size available. And of course you need to, to save it in the SSH directory. And uh, an important thing is not to set a passphrase because uh, this SSH key is going to be used by a systemd script, uh, systemd unit style. So you cannot put a passphrase otherwise it doesn't work, it won't work. Of course, you need to, to copy the SSH pub, uh, public key in the remote server. So when you generate uh, the um, SSH key here, okay, here there is um, an example that I can also show you how this works. So if we generate a key like this, so let's just say SSH key gen minus T RSA minus B. Here I put a small key because it's faster. I see it's already. So I degenerated the key and then you name it, I don't know, like uh, test key, no passphrase. And here I move the, the key into another directory. So here there is the private key and the public key. So this public key, which has this format, see, you can copy it. You have to copy all the string here in the authorized key file of the other server. So here's the, the path is this one. You just need to append that key. And on the main server, you need to use uh, that um, the private key here. So you need to configure SSH, add the, the, um, the host here like this. So match host, other server, user root, put the full path of the key and uh, then it should work. If you test it like this, it should um, log in directly without prompting you for a password. And this is an, an important part to do on the secondary server, because here you configure the port uh, for the SSH port forwarding. So in, in your SSH uh, daemon configuration, you must add this uh, section here, especially this line, which will enable uh, the opening of the Olama port, which is 11,434 by default. We're going to use this one and the other uh, important Option is allow TCP forwarding, yes. This one is important. And finally, on the main server, uh, you need to create a, um, yeah, I created a systemd script. 
you could also create a normal script or as long as when you boot as long as it is uh, automatic when you when you build the computer and so the the command is this one so this means that that the remote port 11434 would be forwarded to the local port still 11434 so we we'll use the same port for convenience but it will be as accessible to all addresses so this is important because we are using a docker container and so if you use the uh, local host here so 127001 it wouldn't work Docker cannot access the localhost network, so you need to will need to use the IP address of the main server later. I'll show you how. And so yeah, see root other server. So this is a, just in practice an SSH command. And okay, so this is the first part to connect the two servers. And then you configure Olama. So this is quite straightforward because this is a, a Docker Compose file. And the only important thing to do is to set the uh, volume here, the, the path for the volume. So in this directory, all the, there will be saved all the models. So here I connect it to the other server, and this is the uh, Docker volume directory. So this one here, uh, what I call data path is inside there is this, uh, this stuff here. So if you see models, blobs, See, there are all the, the models here. I can also show you models. Okay, I see 24 gigabytes. Yeah, there is all the data here. And so this one is, uh, is very easy because you just need to, to run it with Docker Compose app as I've written in this uh, systemd unit file. So you can use this systemd unit file where there's the exact start and exact stop instructions. It's already done for you. Uh, once you run it, this is, for example, the, the logs you get from systemd. And see, it's uh, it's working. This means that it's working. The final uh, uh, part, the third part, uh, is the OpenMobi setup. So uh, in this case, you need to clone the OpenMobi repository. So if you go here, it's the repository I showed you in the other video. So you need to clone this uh, with, of course, get clone uh, as it's written here. And then instead of using the available, there are some Docker Compose files like this one. Okay, instead of using this one, I changed it a little bit because as you see here, uh, there is the um, Olama container here, which is created. But uh, as I showed you that uh, we're going to set it up on another computer. So this part is not uh, needed. And in practice, we're going to use just this uh, second part here. And as you see here, okay, I put this one as, as volume. So an SQLite database will be created inside this directory with the user data. For example, the chat history and the uh, user information and all the stuff like that to be put in here. And uh, these uh, environment variables are very important because here, uh, we are going to use uh, the uh, local address and the port, which is 11434, this one. So this is the actual uh, file I'm using and the address of the main server. So the, the IPv4 address of the, the server is this one, 192.168.0.25. And the port is still the same. So you're going to use this um, an address similar to this one, so with HTTP. The API base URL is the same as the, the base URL, but there is just the API endpoint here. And then there is the house check, which of course uses the, the same address, and that says really for the, the Docker Compose file configuration. Here is also explained what I just said. Okay, and yeah, of course you need to build the Docker image because not all uh, elements are present in the, in the image on uh, Docker Hub. So and when you build the Docker image, it will call this file, the, doc the Docker file, as you see here. And I had to change uh, a variable. Yeah, I had to change uh, this uh, variable here from the Docker file because uh, this variable wasn't set. And so I set it explicitly. And then it worked like this. So the platform will be of course, Linux six, uh, MD64. So I have to change that in the Docker file. Yeah, I forgot to add this in the in the instructions, but 
Okay, and um, so you need to run uh, uh, the build command first. Uh, this will take like some minutes, depending on your internet speed, etc. And finally, there is the systemd service file for the Docker container. So just like the Olama one, there's the start and stop uh, commands. And of course, uh, in, in this example here, I set the port 4018 as an exposed port, as you see it here. And so you need to modify your reverse proxy, which can be Apache or Nginx, and of course use the port 4018 to, to serve to serve that. Yeah, and so here yeah, there are some uh, references, and yeah, I think it's all for this video. And if you haven't seen, of course, the other video, I encourage you to see it because there are the the things you can do with the uh, with the llama here. Okay, let's see. And of course, uh, you can ask your questions. And if you like this video, put a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, bye bye.